So, let's take it again from the top. <laughs> Welcome. <clears throat> Prophet David Taylor here. Now, I have a lot of information to give you, like I do every week. So, you know, sometimes I talk really fast, so you're going to have to watch the video again, watch the replay, so you can get all the information. So, let's start off with my tagline. What is my tagline? My tagline is that God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to his servants, the prophets. One more time, God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to his servants, the prophets, okay? All right, I welcome all my audiences, uh, Facebook Live, uh, Periscope, YouTube, uh, however you're receiving this broadcast, God bless you. Thank you if you're watching live, and thank you for watching the replay. <clears throat> I want you to like and share. My goal is to get this, you know, around the world, get this to as many people as we can, because when God releases a prophetic word or prophetic gift is designed to change nations, okay? So please like and share uh, this video when you come on, okay? Uh, now support if you want to sow into my ministry, because um, remember Matthew 10, 41 says, whosoever receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. So God will bless you just like he blesses the prophet. The first thing God is going to give you is increased vision. Um, so many things that God gives you. Uh, whenever you sow into a prophet's ministry. So if you want to sow into my ministry, then uh, paypal.me link is on my Facebook Live and my Periscope profile, also on my Twitter feed, and Amazon Smile. You can go through Amazon Smile through the links I put up there, and anything you buy on Amazon, they donate a portion to Prophet David Taylor, not-for-profit ministries. Okay, <clears throat> now, how you find me, I always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT, stands for Prophet David Taylor, so anywhere you want to look me up online, Start with the hashtag PDT. I'm here live like I am now every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook and Periscope. And then you can watch the replay on YouTube. If you miss it live, that'll be up by Wednesday. And then on the second Thursday of every month at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I do a series called No More Genies, where I'm helping to get us out of genie concept and get us into true faith and understanding with God. Okay? <clears throat> That's also on Facebook and Periscope. So let's jump right in to the Word of God for today. <clears throat> let's go to a quick prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this time. I ask you to fill me with the Spirit, O oh God, to speak through me, to use my mouth, use my voice, use my body, use me, O oh God, in whatever way you see fit, because it's about hearing from you, and it's an honor and a privilege, O oh God, to be a part of you and a part of your kingdom. Have your way in this broadcast and bless your body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Amen and amen. Now, today... Our, our prophetic word and our topic is called Know Me, K-N-O-W, not N-O, not Know Me, but K-N-O-W, Know Me, me being the Lord, okay? Our scripture reference is Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. <clears throat> now, Jeremiah is an Old Testament prophet. The book of Jeremiah is very likely the longest book in the Bible, Okay, Psalms, Isaiah, and Jeremiah are the top three, but I think Je Jeremiah has them beat by uh, several thousand words. So Jeremiah is an Old Testament prophet. He's also what we call a major prophet. Now, I explained that to you before. A major prophet just means that their books were longer. It does not mean that their message was more important. Okay, that's how a lot of people get into trouble when they say, well, we don't need to read the minor prophets. It does not mean their message was not important. That's not what it means. It just means that their books were smaller. That's all. And a lot of the minor prophets, their books are, in some cases, one chapter, some cases two, maybe four chapters. The major prophets, their, their books are like 50 and 60 chapters long. So they have more to say, not their message is more important. Okay? So Jeremiah, an Old Testament prophet, we're going to be reading out of Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24, I'm reading from the Berean Study Bible, verse 23. This is what the Lord says, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, nor the strong man in his strength, nor the wealthy man in his riches, verse 24. But let him who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises loving devotion, justice, and righteousness on the earth, for I delight in these things, declares the Lord. Wow. Uh, now, 
Hey there, Sally B. Thank you for inviting followers. Um, and the first person to join, I'm sorry I missed you. I saw your name pop up, but welcome to you too. Now, <clears throat> those verses are action-packed. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. The Bible says, this is what the Lord says, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Now, right off the bat, what does God mean by that? Uh, what I want to address there is what I call false humility. Many times people think that trying not to act or trying to act like you don't have a gift is humility or that's being pious or humble or righteous or whatever for God. No, that's actually pride. That's actually arrogance. That's actually denial. Okay? Remember that nothing in nature does that except people. Eagles don't act like they don't have those great big beautiful wings and those super sharp eyes and those sharp claws. And trees don't try to act like they're not mighty and rooted to the ground. And nothing living denies what it is except people. So whatever kind of gift you have from God, you're supposed to acknowledge that. You're supposed to walk in it. You're supposed to use it. That's why you have it. That's not what this verse is saying. This verse is saying, let, the, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. You're not supposed to be boasting about what you have, okay? God favor one join. God bless you, okay? You're not supposed to let it go to your head. You're not supposed to let it make you think you're more than what you are. Then it says, know the strong man in his strength. That doesn't mean you're not supposed to exercise strength if you have it, or strength, you know, uh, use your strength. That's not what that means. He says, don't boast in it. Don't let that be the thing that makes you think you have a right to brag. Okay, and then it says, nor the wealthy man in his riches. God bless you. Uh, God's favorite, good to see you. It says, nor the wealthy man in his riches. What does that mean? <clears throat> Just what it says. If you've got money, don't try to act like you don't have money, but it's not supposed to be a boasting point. <clears throat> it's not supposed to be something, and I'm going to tell you what that word means in a minute, the word boast. It's not supposed to be a boasting point, uh, a bragging point. But then verse 24 says, But let him who boasts boast in this, that he understand and knows me. Okay? Now, that word boast, all right, that word boast, I see y'all saying hi to each other. That word there is uh, halal, halal, and you know what it means? It means to shine. So in other words, the thing that makes you shine, the thing that makes you glow, the thing that makes you, you know, uh, uh, light up when you come into the room is not supposed to be your wisdom, okay? It's not supposed to be your strength if you have it. It's not supposed to be your money if you have it, okay? But if when you shine, it says, let him who shines shine in this that he understands and knows me. Now, that word there, understands, what does that mean? Coming out of the Hebrew, that word is sakal. That means to be prudent okay now that word is pretty much a word people don't use that much in english anymore the word prudent but what that means is it means wisdom we used to call it mother wit it, uh, we might call it common sense we might call it knowing how to handle your business okay so in other words god is saying the thing that ought to make you shine is if you are prudent with me if you know me if you are wise when it comes to your relationship with me, and when it says knows, to know, what does that mean? To be intimate, just like the Lord says in Matthew, all the people that come before God bragging about all the stuff they did in this life and dragging all their good works, that, that has no meaning in God's kingdom. Okay? The Lord says, depart from me, get out of my face, because I never knew you. We were never intimate. We never had an intimate relationship. So the Bible is saying that if you're going to shine on something, if you're going to boast on something, you should be prudent. You should understand and know God. You're supposed to know God. Now, when the Bible says that Adam knew his wife Eve in Genesis, that's talking about sex. That's talking about the first time they had sex. When it says that Adam knew his wife Eve, that means they had sex, they made love, sexual intercourse. So the Bible talks about intimacy and connection as knowing. That's where that, that English translation comes from. Intimacy, knowing. To know someone, and like what Bishop Jake said, Bishop Z Jake said a couple weeks ago, once you know someone, you can't unknow them, which is very, very true. So what is God saying to us here? God is saying to us here, we're supposed to have that intimate, passionate, love-making relationship with God, and we're supposed to have wisdom 
and understanding when it comes to God. That's what's supposed to make us shine. But far too many of us, too many of us are up in verse 23. We're boasting in our wisdom, thinking that we're smart. We're boasting in our strength, and we're boasting in our riches. Don't you know that wisdom and strength and riches can all go away? They can go away in less than a day. Did you know that? No matter how smart you are. Now, I have seen people with dementia, and I have seen people with Alzheimer's. I would not wish it on anybody. But don't you know, God forbid, we don't want that to happen. But if that did happen, don't you know that something could literally erase your mind like erasing a hard drive? And you wouldn't even remember your own life. Alzheimer's is so terrible until... If it progresses, you forget how to eat. You won't just forget who you are. You won't just forget your family. You will literally forget how to pick up a spoon and bring food to your mouth. I kid you not. Uh, it says, know the strong man in his strength. Okay? Whenever you're at peak max strength, okay, you may not stay there your whole life. You can lose your strength. It may not come from age. It might come from disease or an accident. You never know. And then it says riches. Now, we, if you are over the age of 15, you ought to know that money can go away like that. Money can just boop. What happened uh, this weekend with California? What happened in the last week? Those terrible wildfires wiping out homes, multi-thousand, multi-million, tens of million dollars worth of property damage, wiping out homes like that. Do you see that? So that's why the Lord is saying we're not supposed to be boasting and stuff like that. Because when you start boasting in it, when you start shining in it, you start leaning on it. And you start thinking that, you know, it's my own wisdom or it's my strength or it's my money that helps me make it through life. And that's not true. But the Lord said, let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me. Okay. Then it goes on to say that I am the Lord, verse 24, Jeremiah 9, 24, that I am the Lord who exercises loving devotion, justice and righteousness on the earth. For I delight in these things, declares the Lord. Now, right there, that ought to tell you something. The Bible says that God exercises. What does that mean? It means to operate in. It means to use. It means to do. God exercises loving devotion, justice and righteousness on the earth. Loving devotion. What does that mean? That means that the Lord shows up in your bedroom every morning waiting to fellowship with you. The Lord shows up every morning waiting to talk to you. What's, what's my tagline? What's the first thing I say whenever I start my broadcast? I say that God already told you what was going to happen if you just listen to the prophets. Don't you know that every morning when you start your day, the Lord is there to help prepare you for whatever that day holds? That's part of his loving devotion. Why do you think people run into things that they could have avoided? Do you know why people run into things they could have avoided? Because you didn't take the time to listen to the one that's lovingly devoted to you. So let me make it practical, okay? Let me make that really, really clear. A lot of people don't have the money they could have had in life because you haven't been listening to the Lord about your finances, okay? So many of you that have been praying about money, you don't understand that the Lord is trying to tell you he put the answer in you a long time ago. God gave you multi-million dollar ideas. Don't you know that? Don't you know that, uh, especially in America, but don't you know that entrepreneurship is what yields great wealth? God's going to give you an idea. Are you paying attention to your ideas? See, and the Lord will be there with his loving devotion in the morning to whisper these things to you if you're listening. Okay? Also, the same thing hold true, holds true about relationships and marriage. Now, I know for a fact that a whole lot of folks are married to the wrong person. There's no way to cut that, no way to spin that, no way to go around it, no way to massage it and make it different. You quite simply married the wrong person. I just received an idea this morning. Amen. Praise God, Sally B. Act on that idea. Okay, because there's a blessing in it. And there's just quite a few people that are just married to the wrong person. Do you know why? Do you know why they're married to the wrong person? I'll tell you why. Because you didn't listen when God was talking to you. Because the Lord says he exercises loving devotion. He's devoted to us. I know for a fact that's true. You know how I know that's true? Because the Lord is faithful. He's faithful every morning to show up in your bedroom, wherever you slept, your inner chamber. God is faithful to show up because he wants to fellowship with you every day. He's devoted and he's lovingly devoted. And that's what we're supposed to know. 
as Christians, that's our advantage as believers, is that every day we start our day, we don't have to start our day blind. We don't have to start our day with no knowledge. We can start our day listening to the one that knows what the day holds. Okay, let me show you how deep this marriage thing is. The Lord showed me that this marriage thing is so deep that there, there's some things he wrote on the inside of the human spirit that are so deeply written that, that this marriage thing is one of the things where even if you're not saved, you'll have a radar. I know that's deep. The Lord told me this one time. He said, there is no person on the face of the earth that's married that when they got ready to walk down the aisle, if that person wasn't the right one, where they didn't know it. Wow. <laughs> Let me say that again. The Lord told me that this marriage thing is so deep that even if you're not a Christian, before you got ready to walk down the aisle, if you were getting ready to get married to the wrong person, you knew it. You knew it somewhere inside of you. Wow. Just wow. Okay? So that's why God is saying we're supposed to be wise and prudent with him. We're supposed to know him. We're supposed to know that he is lovingly devoted to us. That means he's not just going to let you walk into a bad marriage. If you walked into a bad marriage, it's because you ignored what the Lord was saying. Because he's lovingly devoted to you. He didn't want you to go through all that. Okay, he put a check somewhere in your spirit and in your life to let you know that this one you with is not the one. Even if you not saved, that's how deep this is. That you have a knowing built in from the creator to let you know that if whoever you hooked up with, it, they ain't the right one, you know it. It's the most amazing thing. Then it goes on to say that God exercises justice and righteousness on the earth. Now, now, those two are deep because many times when we look in life, we say things like, you know, that's not fair and blah, 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 and why is this kind of stuff happening? Let me give you a brief teaching on fairness. The reason you can't get fairness out of life is because there is no fairness. God never built it in. There's no fairness. That's a human concept. There's no such thing as fair. It doesn't exist. Okay? God never built fairness into life. When you talk about things ain't fair, what you mean is fair to me. And when you're talking about fair to me, you're just talking about haves and have nots. And there's nobody that has what they want out of life walk around talking about life ain't fair. It's just people that don't have what they want. Okay? But there is no fairness. There is no time or space or case of circumstances where all creatures have all the same everything all the time at the same level. There's no fair. It doesn't exist. But what God did build, uh, what God did build into the world is justice. He says that right there. He says who exercises loving devotion, justice, and righteousness, not fairness, because there is no fair. Okay? But he says he exercises justice. What does that mean? Let me explain to you what that means. Here it go. Don't miss it. Justice is you reap. What you sow, Lord have mercy. I wish, see, if I could put anything on a plaque and wish I could put it on every house, it would be that. You reap what you sow, okay? Nothing is more just than that. And God says he exercises justice. You know what that means? That means that God is going to judge you based on the words of your own mouth. He's going to judge you based on the work of your own hands. He's going to judge you based on your own choices. That's right. That's right. That's why we're supposed to know him. Because then you would understand you have to worry about other people. If you're worried about other people, you don't have to worry about other people. They're going to get their just desserts. But they doing this and they doing that. It does not matter. Because they going to reap what they sow. It might take a 10 or a 20 or 30 years. And another thing about God, another reason that you need to know the Lord, is because God will visit the sin just like he'll visit a blessing, reach much love, amen. God will visit the sin or a blessing two and three and four generations because God is outside of time. That means if you honor God with your life, your grandkids and your great-grandkids are going to be reaping a blessing from it. It also means if you dishonor God with your life, 
your grandkids and your great grandkids going to be reaping a curse off of what you did. Did you know that? That's why we're supposed to know the Lord because too many times we, we just spend so much time just uh, being upset about what other people are doing. Just all been out of shape because, well, look at that and look at this and they're doing this and they're doing that. And you don't understand. The Lord says, I exercise justice and justice is you reap what you sow. You cannot possibly be any more just than that. So what that means is that you need to stay focused on the Lord and focused on your own choices. That's all you have to worry about. And then he says he exercises righteousness. Well, what is righteousness? Righteousness has a lot of meanings. One meaning of righteousness is right standing before God. Another meaning of righteousness is righteous acts. Okay? But the Lord is saying that when he shows up, he brings righteousness with him. That means when God comes on the scene, he going to make it right. That's why we pray. Because when we pray, we're inviting God into the situation. We're inviting righteousness in the situation. So when we don't have solutions, when we don't know what's going on, when we can't work it out, we call on God. And then the Bible says, I delight in these things. So God delights in being lovingly devoted to us. God delights in uh, bringing justice into a situation. God delights in bringing righteousness into a situation. You see that? As Christians, we're supposed to know that. That's our advantage. That's why the Lord says, don't boast in wisdom, don't boast in your strength, don't boast in your money. Boast or shine in understanding and knowing me. Because when you know that, when I know that the creator of the universe is lovingly devoted to me, then why am I sad? Why am I afraid? The one that made it all is lovingly devoted. He'll show up every day just to share his love and his knowledge with me. He will exercise justice on this earth. God's going to be sure that you reap what you sow. Even if it takes the rest of your life, even if that comes down on the head of two and three and four generations of your family. Some people don't understand. That's why they're so messed up. And some people don't understand. That's why their kids so messed up. Because somebody in your bloodline did something. Or you did something like King David in the Bible, and now you're reaping it. A whole lot of people don't understand that. And then he says, God says, I del he is going to bring righteousness. The Lord is going to make the situation right because he's the only righteous one. Then it says he's del he delights in these things. You see that? You see why we're supposed to boast and shine in that? Do You see why that's so important? Okay? So we're supposed to know him. And I've discovered that always makes a difference in every situation. I've discovered that when you are at a moment of decision, what makes a difference is whether or not you know Christ. Because if you know the mind of Christ, you know how the Lord thinks, you know the Lord's commandment, you know what the Lord would do in that situation. If you do what the Lord wants you to do, you're going to get the victory, no matter how it feels in the moment. For example, let me give an example. Sometimes there are times when you just really get angry and you just want to tell people off. You just want to go off. And you feel the Holy Spirit saying, now, don't do that. Don't lose your temper. Don't go off. Don't start yelling. Don't do that. Just hold your peace. Your flesh isn't going to like that, and your ego is not going to like that either. But I guarantee you, if you do what the Lord says do, you're going to get victory in that situation. Don't you know that sometimes people that you're mad at is a misunderstanding? Don't you know that sometimes that you're, you're just miscommunicating? And if you go in a situation you go all off, you're going to create a whole new thing that you could have avoided. But if you hold your peace, sometimes they'll come back and say, Hey, can we talk about this? Or, hey, did we know so-and-so? Or, did I understand you correctly? And then you find out you was reading the whole thing wrong. What if you were just charged in there, just going all off? Just, just flipping out on folks. You see what I mean? It's knowing the Lord in any, any situation that can help you make the right decision and give you the victory, regardless of how that looks or how that feels. You see that? My pastor preached about, this, about that this morning. My pastor was reading my mail this morning. Oh, Lord, he was reading my mail this morning. I mean, it's like he was listening to my conversation. Because I had some conversations this week, and when Pastor preached this morning, it's like he's reading my mail. And see, that kind of stuff only happens by the Holy Ghost. That's how I know. That's the Holy Ghost talking to me. And Lord, have mercy, he read my mail. But whenever you sit under the ministry of an apostle, it breaks stuff off of you. It sets you free. There's deliverance 
in the apostolic and the prophetic. It's the most amazing thing. And I got so blessed by listening to what my pastor, Apostle John Eckhart, had to say. And it released me from it. It broke some stuff off me that I was just talking about as recently as last night. And the Lord sent deliverance out of the mouth of my pastor like that. Now you see that? Because I know Jesus. I know that was him talking to me through the Holy Ghost. And, and the more I meditated on what he was saying, I felt the deliverance coming. I realized that what Pastor Eckhart had to say was freedom. It was liberty. And that's the mark of the Spirit of God because the Scripture says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You see what I mean? So it's because I know the Lord and I know what the Word says that I'm able to receive that victory. And if I didn't, it would just went around, just would have went over my head. And I, I would still be in a different place mentally. I'm in a completely different space mentally after listening to my pastor sermon this morning because I know that was the Lord speaking through him and he was walking right down my street, opened up my email, right in my head and my heart. See what I mean? Because knowing the Lord makes the difference. That's what the Lord is saying here. So, so the point, my brothers and my sisters, is I want you to get to know Jesus the Christ. I want you to take advantage of his loving devotion. Because he shows up at the beginning of our day. You will feel the presence of God. And sometimes it's so gentle and sweet, you can miss it. But when you make, wake up in the morning, the Lord will be there. The Lord will be there. The Lord will be there. Amen. I want to know him more. Amen. The Lord will be there to fellowship with you. And you know what he's going to do? Let me tell you one of the benefits of fellowshipping with God early in the morning. Not only is he going to get your spirit happy, not only is he going to, you know, charge you and give you energy, but he's going to download into your spirit the things you'll need to know for the day. Did you know that? Everything that God does is not necessarily a verbal him saying it to you, but because we fellowship spirit to spirit, because we are connected through the Holy Spirit, there's some stuff the Lord just downloads into you. Did you know that? It's the most amazing thing. It won't always be him saying, at 2 o'clock, do this. At 4.30, do that. It's, no. Sometimes he just downloads stuff into your spirit. Did you know that? That's right. That's why sometimes in that day you get that knowing where it's like, no, I don't think I should do that now. Or, yeah, you know what? I need to go this way. Or, no, I don't think I'm going to take that street. Or, yeah, you know what? I don't think it's time to go home yet. That kind of thing. You know how you get those knowings? Because the Lord downloads them into your spirit in the morning when you have fellowship with him. Did you know that? What? A blessing, what a benefit, what an advantage to being a Christian. Okay, okay, Krista, I'm going to pray in a minute. Uh, I'm going to open it up for prayer in a minute, so put that tag back up in a minute because I am going to pray, okay? What an advantage to be able to know the Lord. Do you see that? And that's just one of the many blessings you get. And then we have to look at the converse. The converse is if you don't spend time with God, you get none of the advantages of that download. That means you charge out into your day not having talked to the Lord, not knowing what's going to happen, not having your spirit full, and not having any of the things you need to overcome in that day. I'll give you a personal example. I was in a situation many, many years ago where it was time for me to leave a job. Before I went to work that day, I felt the spirit of peace descend on me, and it stayed on me. And whenever I feel that, I know something to go down. And the Lord is literally wrapping his arms around me so I don't lose my temper and go off. Okay? So I was in that job, and sure enough, the boss in that situation went off on me. I mean, they went off. I mean, they got in my face, went off. And I just looked at them and walked out. You know why? Because the spirit of peace descended on me before I even went to work because God was holding me like, you know, you don't have to get upset. I'm with you. I got you. Before I even got in the situation. Do you see what I mean? What an advantage. What an advantage of being a Christian. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So, as the scripture says, Jeremiah, those of you that are tuning in late, Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. But if we're going to boast, we're supposed to boast in that we understand and know him. See that? So we need to be taking advantage as Christians over all these benefits that the Lord wants to give us through his loving devotion. See what I mean? All right. Uh, so let's move. Uh, now, uh, I got some prayer requests. So somebody, I think it was Krista. 
put that back up on the screen on Periscope, Krista, if you want me to pray for you. I'm opening anything up for prayer requests. So if you want prayer requests, if there's something you need prayer for, put it on the screen now and we'll pray. Okay, Krista, what do you want me to pray about for you? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Put your prayer request on the screen, please. Now, I'm praying in tongues. When you see my mouth moving, you'll hear nothing coming out. I'm praying in tongues to charge my spirit and get more sensitive to what the Holy Ghost is saying. All right. Pray to God uh, will reveal to me what my calling is. I feel called by God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now praying for my sister, Christ, oh God. I ask you to reveal yourself and your call to her, oh God. She feels your touch. She feels your call. She feels you talking to her, oh God, but she wants to know what that calling is. So, Lord, I ask you to reveal to her, and I release unto her a spirit of understanding. I release unto Christa a spirit of revelation. I release unto her a spirit of wisdom and knowledge in you, O oh God, so that she will know what her calling is, so she will have no doubt, O oh God, so that she'll be able to prove the perfect will of God and walk in everything you've called her to do and to be. And I thank you right now that it's done, and we believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Krista, that means the Lord is going to reveal to you everything that you need to know. So expect it. Start looking for it. Now, what I don't know is how, because God deals with everybody in different ways. I don't know how the Lord is going to reveal himself to you, but I know he will reveal himself to you and make you to know what it is he wants you to do. Amen and amen. Any other prayer requests? If you've got a prayer request right now, put them on the screen. Okay, Holy Ghost is telling me somebody's dealing with some stomach issues. You got some stomach issues. If you got some stomach problem, uh, problems, touch your screen right now. Put your hand on the screen. Thank you. I've been searching for you as a slow process. The Lord will reveal it to you. Amen, Chris. The Lord will reveal it to you. Put your hand on the screen if you've got some stomach problems right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak life and healing to that stomach. I command the stomach lining to come back together. I command the intestines to be straightened out. Uh, I command everything to be 100% whole in your stomach and digestive system with no more digestion problems, with nothing but health and healing in your stomach. I speak it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now, somebody just put up something. Uh, prayer for, I believe it was marriage. Put that back up on the screen so I can pray for that. Okay, Sally. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you on behalf of Sister Sally. We pray for a direction and restoration of God that she, you promise in your word that if in all of our ways we acknowledge you, you would direct our path. And you promise us in Joel 2, O God, that you would restore to us the years that the locust and the cankerworm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm has eaten, O God. So I ask you to restore Sally's life, O God. I ask you to give her direction and help show her the way you would have her go, O God. And, and move her forward according to your plan. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, Sally, the Lord is telling me that what you need to do is you need to, to surrender to his lordship. What you need to do, Sally, is you need to take your hands off of the steering wheel of your life. You need to release the lordship rights of your life to Jesus. That's what you need to do. Because if you still got your hand on the wheel, God's not going to fight you. God does not force us. You need to take your hand off okay, and surrender them to Jesus, and then the Lord will guide and direct, okay, and that's a very, very important lesson for all of us as believers, you hear me say it all the time, you cannot just accept Jesus as Savior, you have to accept Jesus as Lord, you can't just believe he died on the cross for your sins to make you born again, get you in the kingdom of God, and make sure you don't go to hell, that's just, this, when I say just, I mean that's his function as Savior, but you living your life every day is this function as Lord. You have to voluntarily take your hands off of the controls of your life and let Jesus tell you what to do. That's how you walk in victory as a Christian. You can't keep control and get victory. You have to surrender to God. Okay? All right, amen and amen. Any other prayer requests? If you got some prayer requests, put them on. I know I saw another one uh, while I was uh, ministering with healing. Okay. Marriage Restoration Finance is directed and clear. Okay. Okay. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you uh, on behalf of 
I can't see your name. Uh, the request for marriage restoration, finances, and direction. Oh, God, so I ask you to open their eyes, oh, God, with their marriage, with their money, that you would give them clarity, Lord, if there's anything in them that's unclean, oh, God, that you would break it off, that they would get deliverance, oh, God, that you would show them what you want them to do in no uncertain terms, that you would lead God and direct. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, what the Lord is telling me, and I'm sorry I missed your name, it was kind of covered up in the Periscope thing, what the Lord is telling me is, uh, you've got to be sure that everything in your life is clean and holy and right unto God. You, you have to ask the Lord, if there's anything in your life that's not pleasing to him, then you're going to have to repent. Now, to repent means to change your mind. Many times we've been taught that repentance means to stop doing something. That's not what repentance means. Repentance means to change your mind, change the way you think. So you have to go before the Lord and ask him, is there anything in your life that's not pleasing to him? And then when he puts his finger on it, then change your mind about that thing. Repent. Turn from your own thoughts and turn to what thus saith the Lord. That's how we get victory. Okay? Because remember, it's not that God isn't talking to us. It's that we're not listening and obeying. Let me say it one more time. It's not that God is not talking to us. It's that we are not listening and or obeying. That is the problem. You cannot walk in the victory of God just doing what you want to do. You can't have a good marriage running your marriage the way you think. You have to take your hands off the wheel and let Jesus tell you how to be married because Jesus is the one that invented marriage. Jesus is the one that invented husbands. Jesus is the one that invented wives. Jesus is the one that invented children. Okay? Then you have to obey your way into it. That, see, that's why I do my No More Genies teaching on second Thursday nights. Because we think that prayer to God is a, a magic lamp. It's not magic. When you pray to God and you ask God in a situation, God is going to respond to you with a commandment. God is going to tell you to do something or to stop doing something or go here or do this. God is going to respond to you with a commandment. Okay? It's not magic. We don't pray to God and then God just waves his mighty hand and fixes all your problems. That's what you wish it was. That's not what our relationship with God is. When we cry out to God and we ask the Lord for something, he's going to respond to you every time with a commandment. He's going to say, do this or don't do that or go here, or whatever, and then you have to believe it, and then you have to obey. If you don't obey God, you're going to stay right where you are. I, I know we don't hear that a lot anymore in our religious circles, because we become so like enamored with the prosperity message that, you know, that's all we want to hear now. If you don't obey God, you are not going to get the victory. You have to obey. You can't just pray. you got to pray so you can hear you're inviting God in the situation, but the Lord is coming in as the Lord. The Lord is going to give you commandment. The Lord is going to say, do this or don't do that. And if you don't want to hear what God is, has to say, your situation is not going to change. And if you don't obey what the Lord tells you to do, you are not going to get the victory. See what I mean? Okay? So we got to HBO. We got to hear, believe, and obey. Hear, Believe and obey. That's how we get victory as Christians. It's not magic. Okay? All right. Man, this keeps coming to me every week. Amen. God bless you. You're welcome. God favor one. Amen. God bless you. That's what it was. This keeps coming to me every week. When I get to the portion where it's time to cast out demons and unclean spirits, you know what keeps coming up? Low self-esteem. So in the name of Jesus, whoever is watching me, this keeps coming up every time. If you got low self-esteem, I cast that demon out of you right now in Jesus' name. That's the devil in your ear. That's the devil on your shoulder. That's the devil on your head trying to make you feel like you're not worthy. Trying to make you feel like you can't do what God is calling you to do. That's the devil. That's low self-esteem. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the demons are subject to us in his name. So if you've been plagued by low self-esteem your whole life, do this. Put your, put your right hand, 
Put your right hand on your head and say, in the name of Jesus, low self-esteem, I cast you out. You will feel it break off you. And then say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You have to start replacing what the devil has been saying to you with the word of God. And that is in Psalm 139. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That is the word of God towards you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're wonderful. You're beautiful. You're marvelously constructed. You are on purpose. You are exactly who you're supposed to be because you are designed by God. That low self-esteem is a demon. That's a devil in your ear. That's been coming up every time. So now you have to start replacing what the devil's saying. We done broke the devil off, but now you got to put the right words in. And the right words in is that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's Psalm 139. In Psalm 139. Okay? Okay, uh, let me see if the Holy Spirit has anything he needs me to release. Yes. For behold, my children, I call you unto intimacy with me. I called you to listen to the prophets, to listen to my word, to listen to my spirit. For I desire for you to know me intimately. I desire to be close to you. I long to be in your presence. I want to share my wisdom and my knowledge with you. I want to be your Lord. I want to be your God and you be my people for you are indeed my body. I move through you. I walk through you on the earth and I want us to be closer in the upcoming year than we have ever been, says the spirit of the living God. Wow. What a challenge from the Lord. What a, what a grace calling. The Lord said, not only does he want us to know him in fellowship, but he wants to be closer than we've ever been. That means no matter how close you are or have been to the Lord, there's another level waiting for you in 2019. Wow! But let me also give you the converse. This is why I always tell you the opposite. Because many times when we're in religious situations, you just hear stuff one way. You just hear the blessing. Yeah, there's a cursing if you don't listen. If the Lord just told you he wants to be close to you and you don't listen to that, that means you're going to go into 2019 blind like this. Why would you want to start a new year like that? That doesn't even make any sense. So for those of you that know the Lord and love the Lord and want to HBO, hear, believe, and obey, then hear that word from the Holy Spirit. That however close you are to the Lord, there's another level. And he wants to take us to that level in 2019. Think about it. Just wow. What a blessing. See, now I want to jump on it. I'm encouraged. I told you that when I hear the Spirit of God speak, I'm encouraged. I want to jump on that because if there's another level of closeness that God has for me in 2019, that means victory is also in that too. Victory is in being close to him and hearing what he's saying so I know how to obey so I can get the victory because why, why go into the new year blind? See, so that's why you hear me say it all the time. We need to be taken in Excuse me, I'm sorry. We need to be taking advantage of our advantages as Christians. We need to be receiving these grace gifts. We need to learn how to love the Lord and love his presence and, and love being close to him, okay? Because that's how we're going to hear his voice and get the victory. And that's how we're going to know the love. That's how we're going to walk in that good self-esteem. Because I'm telling you, whenever I get to the portion of the program where it's time to cast out unclean spirits... Every week, low self-esteem comes up. So that tells me that the devil's been working overtime on the saints, trying to make you not feel, a good, uh, feel good about yourself. But the way you fight the devil is the same way the Lord fought him in the wilderness. You put the word on him, it is written. And the Bible says that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You do not have to have low self-esteem because you are a designer original from God. That's what my pastor was talking about this morning, about being yourself, about not imitating other people, about not changing who you are, trying to chase around after somebody else's anointing, somebody else's ministry, somebody else's mannerisms, somebody else's anything. Uh, my pastor was very clear. He's like, be you. Be yourself. That's who you're supposed to be. See that? See, that's the right message. That's good self-esteem, understanding that God made you the way he made you on purpose. You're not supposed to be like other people. Okay, so we gotta we go we gotta keep that devil out. We gotta keep that low self esteem devil out. Got to keep that out, and we've got to speak the word of God. 
that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are knit together by God as a design original on purpose. And we don't let anybody come in and interrupt that purpose. Be yourself. Amen and amen. All right. So just a few more things I want to say, then we're going to close out. Um, you heard me say it at the top of the video. There's a lot of information that comes through. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of information that comes through my broadcast. So I really encourage you to watch the replay because a lot is said. So you need to watch it from the top, especially if you didn't catch it live or even if you did. Um, I want you to get on my email list. Now, on my Facebook page, uh, right uh, underneath the top banner, there's a button that says sign up. Click on that and get on my email list so that when new ministry stuff comes out, you'll be alerted to it. Like I have a teaching I'm going to release. I already released it. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to put it together because some things happen with my website. But anyway, I have a teaching on fivefold ministry that I, I've done that I'm going to re-release and then I'm working on some books and everything. So get on that email list so that when new stuff comes out, because there's no spam on any of my email lists, but so that when something new drops, you'll be the first to know. And... Um, so, yeah, and so then also uh, uh, I'm posting and tweeting and putting on Facebook when I'm on live. So if you want to catch me live, okay? So remember to like and share. Remember to watch the replay. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, as I say every week, I count it an honor and a privilege to be used by God because it, it just is to just to know the Lord and have a relationship with him is just literally the most wonderful thing that could happen in your life. And, you know, and it's just a beautiful thing, and I don't ever want to take it for granted. And I'm just grateful, okay, because things could be so different. It's an honor. It's an honor to be used by God. And the only reason I say that is because I want you to take up your call, because I know sometimes the call of God is, is maybe not what you expected, or maybe you don't think you can do it, or a whole bunch of different things. I want you to be encouraged to know that whatever God's calling you to do is going to be the most wonderful thing you've ever done. So accept it, embrace it, walk in it, okay? Because, because these broadcasts, they, they bless me, they bless my very soul, and I'm just happy to hear from the Holy Ghost. Can you imagine if the Lord wasn't talking to you? Can you imagine? Can you tell me season? Uh, okay, hold on. Okay, God's favorite is one. He's saying you, uh, amen, God bless you, Anna. He's saying to you, you're in a season of patience and waiting and restoration. So I, I see it, I feel it in the spirit as I'm talking to you, God's favorite one. God is trying to move you somewhere. You might be trying to move forward, but that's not what the Lord is doing right now. The Lord is trying to move you into a position. So that's why, right, that's why he keeps saying that you've got to move with him. If you're trying to jump out ahead of God, that's not what the Lord is doing. The Lord is, you're in a season of repositioning and restoration. That's what season you're in. God is trying to reposition you, and God is trying to restore you. That's the season that you're in. Right, you're in transition. That's right. So he's trying to move you and get you stable and settled and reposition you into a new situation and then trying to restore you. That's the season that you're in. Amen and amen. All right. Again, thank you all so much for tuning in. Those of you that are tuning in live, thanks so much for watching the replay. And again, like I said, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to walk in the ministry call that God has called you to do. Because it's the most wonderful, blessed thing you will ever do with your life. Okay? All right. God bless you. Uh, we're starting a new month. We're into the December. So I'll be here on the second Thursday, 7 o'clock p.m., Amen. You're welcome. I'll be here at 7 o'clock p.m. on the second Thursday of this month with No More Genies. The one I'm teaching this time is part two of What If I'm Angry With God. Last month in November, I taught part one, What If I'm Angry With God. Part two is coming up in a couple of weeks, What If I'm Angry With God. I'm going to show you how to work through all those points of anger. And then I'll be here uh, next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for another live broadcast. You can watch the replay on Facebook. You can watch the replay on Periscope or on my Twitter, or you can watch the replay on YouTube. Okay? Thank you. God bless you. See you next week. Have a blessed week. Know the Lord, and I'll talk to you soon. God bless.